In this series, I want to break down what different Forge utilities are doing on your server. My hope is that you can use this information if you're troubleshooting one of these utilities, or maybe if you decide to cancel your Forge subscription and manage your servers on your own, it's going to be important to understand what it's actually doing for you. The first Forge utility I want to take a look at is their schedule feature. All this is is a nice interface for the cron program on your server. And what the cron program allows you to do is run commands at a specific time automatically. On my server, you can see I've got four commands set to run. The first two were set up for me automatically when Forge provisioned the server. And the latter two were ones that I added. If I click this little icon next to any of the jobs, I can bring up the edit interface and change any of the details about this job. So if I wanted to disconnect from Forge, I want to understand, well, where are these jobs being actually set on the server? How could I go about editing them, creating new jobs, removing jobs, etc.? And so to understand that, let's switch contexts. I'm going to bring up my command line window where I'm currently SSH'd into the server. And I'm going to use the cat command to output the contents of a file at etc cron tab. And what we see here are the same jobs we were seeing in the Forge interface. They're just written within this cron config file. So moving forward, if we were to manage cron ourselves on our server, we need to understand how to work in this file. So let's do a quick run through of that. Uh, basically, this file consists of cron expressions, where each expression represents an individual job. For example, let's break down this last expression. The first part of the expression you're going to see is always the frequency in which we want this job to run. And I'll break down the syntax for that in a moment. But following that, we're going to see the user the command should be run as. Then we'll see the command itself. And finally, the last part is instructions on what to do with any output from that command. So that's the big picture outline. Let's zoom in on the specifics, starting with the frequency in which the command should run. Here, you're going to see a five digit expression where each digit represents a unit of time. And there's a nice little outline of this at the top of this file in the comments. All right, so the first digit represents your minutes. The next is your hours, your day of the month. Uh, the month, and then finally you have the option of indicating a day of the week. So applying that, when we see something like five asterisks, the asterisk is a wildcard. It's basically indicating every unit of that time. So if we see an asterisk for the minute unit, that's saying basically run this command every minute. And then following that, we see an asterisk again for the hour. So it's going to be every minute of every hour for every day, for every month. Um, you get the idea. All right? And we see this reflected if we look at the Forge interface. All right, here is the command itself. This is the user it's running as, and then there's that frequency expression. And then it gives us a nice plain English representation of that telling us that this command is going to run every minute. Now, not all our commands run that frequently. So coming back to our cron file, uh, if we look at, say, this second uh, job here, we could see a 16 for the minutes. So this indicates this is going to run at 16 minutes of the 10th hour. Uh, we are dealing with a 24 hour clock here, so this would be 10 a.m. And then again, it's every month uh, or every day of every month. So in short, 10, 16 a.m. every day is when this command is going to run. All right, so that's the basic gist of these uh, frequency expressions. Uh, they're not too complex, but uh, I always like to use some sort of online tool to help uh, decipher them, make sure I'm reading them correctly, and make sure I'm writing them correctly when I'm setting up new jobs. Uh, and there's lots of cron tools out there to do that. Um, or nowadays, just use an AI program. You can ask it to decipher these expressions or even generate new ones for you. Following our frequency indicator is the user that our command is going to run as. Uh, and typically, you could just use the Forge user, which is the default user that your server is set up when Forge first provisions your server. Of course, if you've created other users on your system that have different privileges to different things, you could adjust that as needed. In terms of the commands that you're running, uh, this is going to depend, of course, on what your server needs to do, what your applications need to do. In this example I'm looking at, there's two main categories of commands. The first are what I would say are like server maintenance commands. So we're doing things like periodically checking for updates to Composer, uh, periodically uh, invoking our server's package manager to uh, remove and clean up uh, any unnecessary packages. 
And uh, this first one here, this is running a forge provisioning cleanup script. Um, and you'll notice this isn't actually reflected in our forge interface. So that's just like a default cron job that forge uh, forces you to run. So in theory, if you were to cancel your forge subscription, uh, you could come through here and actually delete this job because it's not something that you would need to run in the future. Um, now, on an application-specific level, uh, if you're working with Laravel applications, you typically have one command per application that you want to run, and that's your artisan schedule run command. Uh, and then within Laravel, you should be using their schedule feature where you can then uh, program within your code's application the individual commands you need to run uh, and indicate when they need to run, that sort of thing. The idea here is to really minimize the amount of work we have to do with this clunky cron tab file and uh, outsource all of that work to our code base itself where we get all of the expressive tools that Laravel provides while also keeping track of our jobs in things like version control. Following the command, let's talk about what happens with the output of the command. The most important thing to understand about this is that the output is written to a log file and the directory for that log file is gonna be in your home directory, forge, and then there's this hidden forge directory. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that. So I'm going to change into that directory, list the contents. And among some other output, you could see the log files for my four scheduled jobs. Uh, and these jobs, they are given a unique uh, numerical identifier whenever you create them in Forge. So to the extent that you're managing this cron tab file uh, on your own, anytime you would create a new job, you could just give it some unique identifier. Um, you could name it after the command itself, whatever you want to call it, as long as it's unique, and then come up with a name for a log file to correspond to that. So definitely an important directory to have on your radar, especially if you're setting up new cron jobs, you want to take a look at those log files and just make sure that they're running as expected. Uh, because not only are you going to see any output from those commands written to the log file, if there's any errors when your commands are run, it's going to also be written there. The other thing that happens with your output, uh, and this is pretty typical when you see a cron job like this, is you're going to take any of the output and write it to uh, your server's dev null utility, which you can kind of think of as like a trash can. Uh, and the reason we do this is just when we're running things via cron, we don't want the output to actually go to the console. Uh, we want it to go to the log file. So any output that would have been written to the console just basically gets discarded. So now that we understand the mechanics of these cron expressions, let's just go through an example of setting up a new one. So I'm going to open up the cron tab file. Um, I'll just use my command line text editor nano. And for this example, just so we can see the effects immediately, I'm going to set this job to run every minute. I'll have it run by the forge user. And because this is a demo, I'll just do a basic echo. I'll say this is a test. Following the patterns of the previous commands, I'll output to dev null. I'll also replicate this to caret at one. And in these expressions, the two represents your standard errors and the one represents your standard output. So what we're saying here is take any of your errors and write it to the same location you're outputting your standard output, which we just set to dev null. So in other words, this is saying take any errors and also write them to dev null. Following that, we also want to output to our log file. And as I mentioned earlier, we can call these log files whatever we want. We just want to make sure they're unique. So I'll call this one scheduled demo.log. And just like we did with dev null, any errors will also go to this log file. So there's my full command. And to test this out, let's save our changes in nano. I'll do that with the keyboard shortcut control X. I'll type the letter Y and then hit enter. And I am getting a permission denied error. This cron tab file is owned by root. So when I opened it with nano, I should have done it with super user privileges. So to fix that mistake, I'm going to exit nano, reopen it using sudo. Uh, before I do that, though, let me copy this command. Uh, and to get the full command, I'm going to zoom out. And uh, that way I could see the full command, copy it. And then uh, let's exit nano. So uh, again, we're going to do control X, but this time we're not going to try to save it. So I'm going to type the letter N, hit enter. And then, like I said, we're going to reopen it, this time prefixing our nano command with sudo. This will ask you for your password for your Forge user. If you're unsure what this password is, check the video description. I have details there on how you can access it. Uh, but in my case, I'm just gonna type in my password and hit enter. Go back to the bottom of my cron tab file, paste in that command that I had set up previously, and then let's try to save it again. So that's gonna be control X, type the letter Y, hit enter. 
And perfect, it saved that time without any permission issues. Now in terms of setting up new jobs, that's all I had to do was add it to that cron tab file. There's no command that I have to run to get the cron daemon to recognize those changes. It's just gonna pick up on that new job the next time that it runs. Uh, so at this point, all I need to do is just let a minute pass because remember we set the frequency of that job to run every minute. And then I'm gonna look at my log files and confirm that it actually ran. All right, so it's been a minute. Let's look at our uh, directory contents. Remember, we're currently in the directory where our log files are written. And there we go, there's our scheduled demo.log file. Let's look at the contents. And there's our output from our demo command. So as you can see, it's pretty straightforward to manually manage your cron jobs on your server. Um, I will note though that I only recommend manually doing this if you are stopping using Forge. Uh, because if you continue to use Forge, what you're going to see is any of the jobs you manually create are not going to be represented in your scheduled jobs interface, right? And just to show this, if I refresh this page, we're not going to see that demo job that I added. So you don't want to run into a situation where you have jobs running on your server that you forget about because you're not seeing them in this interface. Really everything I'm showing in this video, as I mentioned at the start, is just for those who might be thinking about canceling their Forge subscription, uh, subscription to understand uh, how to manually take over what Forge is doing for you. So I don't recommend doing these things concurrently. Now to wrap things up, uh, a couple things I wanna put on your radar before you go. Uh, if you go over to the notes that accompany this video, go down to the very end, there's a uh, few commands just to have on your radar when it comes to working with cron in regards to the daemon itself. Uh, one, there's a command to see what the status of the daemon on your server is. So if you notice like your cron jobs aren't running, you're not sure why, go ahead and check the status of it. Make sure that cron daemon is currently running. Um, if necessary, you can also stop and then start the daemon. You shouldn't generally need to do this once it's running, everything should be fine. If your server were to be restarted, it should automatically restart the cron daemon for you. But just in case you run into a troubleshooting situation, it is helpful to know that these commands exist. So to wrap things up, I'm gonna include a link to a playlist with other videos I'll be publishing uh, in this series on Forge Under the Hood. So I hope you'll follow along with them. And if there's a particular feature you wanna see me dig into, feel free to leave a comment below.